Hey guys, this is Blake from Matt Kite, and today I'm going to go over the rules of navigation. I am here in Doha, Qatar. It's my last week before heading to Vietnam. And over there, there's hundreds of kiters. I'll be in Moi Ne teaching at uh, Sea to Sky Resort. And um, there, there are hundreds of kiters out at once. So it's a busy place. It can be quite hectic on the water with beginners, intermediate, advanced. And no matter what your skill level, you have to know the rules of navigation. And like many of you, you've learned, um, you've taken a couple lessons, or some of you have taught yourself, but you don't learn everything in a lesson. And sometimes you get on the water and you just kind of go out there and you move around and you do your best to stay out of people's way, but you don't know the proper rules of the road. So like if you go drive a car and it's busy out, you have to know the basic rules in order to not get a ticket or not get in a car crash. So same thing here, um, kiteboarding in busy areas. It is a bit different and you just have to know how to not get tangled up because no one likes getting tangled and um, even if someone else it's their fault it's good to know how to um, stay out of that situation. So this is the rules of navigation and my last video blog in Qatar. The key to success in kiteboarding is that you just want to stay really patient, you really want to stay informed, and you want to know what you're doing when you go out there. So you want to be able to visualize, and in order to visualize, you have to understand what you're going to go out and do. So you take your beginning kiteboarding courses, maybe like 10, 15 hours of classes, you've learned everything you need to know, you've rigged kites a bunch, you've been out on the water, you've been with an instructor, body dragging, riding, and then all it is is practice. But once you get to that point, it can be a little intimidating, or very intimidating actually, um, because then you're around a bunch of other riders, you don't want to look stupid, not looking stupid, it's just um, as you're learning, a lot can go wrong. So you want to be able to go out there, have a good time, but at the same time it's intimidating, or you're just a little bit scared. So in order to go out and do the best you can, um, you should first know how to self-rescue or eject your kite safely. Then you want to know how to navigate around other kiters because you don't want to be a beginner going out there not knowing what to do if someone's coming at you and always having to stop. So these steps that we're going to give you will help you navigate around people and just make you feel more comfortable once you're out there on the water. Just a note, not everyone knows the rules. Always be cautious and if, even if you're a beginner and you know these rules, just know that you have to not everyone's gonna follow the rules. There's no uh, traffic police out there patrolling the kiters, um, unless you're at a really controlled beach. But there's no one out there that are writing tickets. So just make sure that if someone isn't following the rules or if someone's being reckless and it's gonna hurt someone, just to like kindly inform them. Um, I found that just be nice and it works a lot better than uh, shouting at someone or yelling at them trying to get them to be different. If you want someone to um, be a little more respectful or just uh, you have want them to follow by the rules, just go up to them and kindly ask them if, and inform them because they might not even know um, what the rules are. So that's what we're going to be going over and just spread the good word because we want all of our kite beaches to be safe and we don't want anyone to get hurt or to make a bad name for the sport. So. It's all about having fun and making sure that everyone is having a good time. So just think of um, this as like a food chain of respect. The most powerful vessel should have the most respect towards the less powerful vessels. So at the top of the food chain we have boats and jet skis and those uh, really powerful motorized vehicles. And so since they're at the top of the food chain, they should be most respectful to the people on the bottom of the food chain. Even still watch out for boats they're not always paying attention and never know what the person coming at you is doing or what they're thinking or they've seen you so always be on your guard and always uh, make sure that you're being safe out there so foil borders foil borders can ride almost straight into the wind you can move around very quickly and go straight into the wind and so after the boats and the jet skis come the foilers who should give way to the other people because you can easily go right back up wind so just because you're a foiler and you can go anywhere you want, that means that you should have more respect for the people that can't go everywhere they want. 
for the kiters who are working to stay upwind and struggling to maintain where they are. So then come the kiters, because kiters have long lines, they're traveling quickly and they can turn on a dime. So kiters should give way to the sailboats, uh, the windsurfers, respect the windsurfers. It's a great relationship we have and both sports are awesome. They're both just because you want to have fun and cruise along the water. They're both great. And um, I grew up windsurfing and learned to windsurf when I was two with my dad in the Persian Gulf here. And um, so yeah, respect everyone. And um, just remember, the more power you have, more responsibility. So food chain of respect for more power, more responsibility. So that's just kind of an easy way to look at it to start. And then as you're starting on the beach, um, so let's say that you've just rigged up your kite, you're wanting to go out, um, you're looking out at all the kites. If someone's coming in to land and they've like tapped their head and they're coming in, just let them come down first because they're coming to shore. So if you have your kite on the ground and someone's coming in, let them, they have the right of way to land their kite first because they're on their way in. Once you have the clear beach, you're ready to launch, you throw your kite back up, then you have the right of way as to someone who's coming to the beach. So if someone's coming at the beach um, and they see you're trying to launch your kite, they can easily make a tack out and come right back. Whereas you're, um, the most dangerous part of kiting is launching and landing. Just like in an airplane, launching and landing is the hardest, most dangerous part. Because that's where the most things can go wrong. Because you're not in the water, you're on land, and if anything goes wrong. So you have the right of way um, launching your kite. Then once you get out on the water, it's upwind or downwind. So let's say you're riding in the same direction. So if you're riding in the same direction, the person is going upwind, just maintain your course and just put your kite a little bit higher. Because if you're riding upwind and then you put your kite down low, then you're distancing yourself that far away from the kiter downwind of you and then they have to really go super far downwind and lose all the ground. So you're gonna get a lot of angry kiters if you're always keeping your kite low and they're always having to stay that far away from you. Um, but it's a good thing to stay that about a line's length away as well. So if you're uh, passing someone or there's um, you're in encountering someone, just remember if you're upwind, keep your kite high and maintain your course. If you're downwind, then slightly veer off downwind and put your kite low. So that way you can kind of go and work with each other. And same goes for if you're coming at each other or if you're overtaking someone. So um, there's starboard and there's port. So starboard means that you're traveling to the right. Port means that you're traveling to the left. There's a lot of terminology for this that you can use. Um, upwind, downwind, you can use port, starboard. Um, upwind or downwind is more of where you are positioned in the wind. Port and starboard is the direction that you're traveling. So um, starboard to the right, you always have the right of way. So if you're traveling to the right, then you always have the way of the person coming to the left towards you. So if you're traveling to the right, um, then the person to the left should give way to you and kind of put their kite low and let you pass. If you are coming from port and you're giving way to someone on starboard, um, they have the right of way, which means usually they'll stay upwind of you and you go downwind, but sometimes they will be heading downwind. So the person who is in the starboard tack, they, have, they get to decide which way they're going to go. So even though it's proper to stay upwind if you have starboard and let the port go downwind, um, sometimes people are intimidated by getting that close to you and they want to go downwind. So the biggest thing is you both don't want to go downwind. So if you see the person on the starboard tack who has the right of way, head downwind, then just hold your course and stay upwind because uh, you both don't want to go in the same direction. So don't always expect that just because you have the starboard advantage that you're in the clear that someone coming to you from the port is going to respect that. So if someone isn't respecting you by those, just kind of um, do the right thing, be the better person and just get out of their way and let them do that. And then afterwards have a talk with them and just be nice and uh, just let them know like, hey man, um, do you know the rules of navigation? Here's this video link, you can uh, check it out and learn them for yourself. Or there's many videos online about that. And um, yeah, just be respectful, patient, and uh, it's always fun kiting with other people. And just let beginners go, you know? We were all beginners at one point in our experience of kiteboarding and 
It's, uh, they will learn and they will grow and um, we want all beginners to succeed. If you see a beginner, just help them out or just stay out of their way and give them some space. So another thing that's very important is wave riding. Um, it's just like surfing, you know, like you've, we've all probably been there where you're out. Um, if you've surfed, you get out there and you let people take the wave as they're paddling. You don't want to steal waves from people. It's like uh, cutting in line. You just, it's not very nice. So you don't just kind of steal waves. So um, if someone's on a wave, they have the right of way. Just give them the right of way. You don't want to ruin someone's um, wave just because you like want to get around them. It's not very respectful. So. Whoever is on the wave, just give them the right away. Another thing is if you're in a slick, like flat water, um, little pond or little in between a lagoon or something, if you're in a flat water slick, um, everyone deserves to play and everyone wants to enjoy it. So don't hog it for yourself and run people off the water. Just um, try and just like a wakeboarding park, make nice rotations where everyone gets a turn. And so like right here, that's flat water spot. So it's nice, slick, flat, and uh, everyone wants to ride there. So whoever you are, any skill level, just res be respectful, have fun, enjoy yourself, don't take it too seriously, be informed, and that's about it. So I'm here, and next week I'll be in Vietnam. So I'm just gonna go skate around a little bit. Got my little penny board. This is a really cool spot. I'm here in Doha, Qatar. Got a big statue here, the Museum of Islamic Art over there, and city of Doha, right here. It's a beautiful place. So if you guys are ever passing through the Middle East, have a stop in Qatar. Amazing kiteboarding, especially if you're looking for flat water and a great place to learn. And uh, hit up Yella Kiteboarding School. Cameron Marchand is a Canadian guy who runs uh, Yella Kiteboarding here. Awesome guy, has a great setup, takes you to the most beautiful beaches, and has all the gear. So hit them up, and I'll see you guys next week in Vietnam. Woo! Be safe.